Hi there. In week six of the course, we discussed various un and under-researched topics. We noted that there's a lack of research into counterterrorism practices, the various roles and actors involved. Another under-researched topic in the field of terrorism studies is the role of women and more broadly, gender-related issues. But we're very glad to have someone with us today who is an expert in these issues, Dr. Joanna Cook. She's an assistant professor at Leiden University and a senior project manager at the ICCT. Well, and she wrote the book that I have here, have here A Women's Place, U.S. Counterterrorism Since 9-11. Well, thank you, Dr. Cook, for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. So could you first of all tell us a bit more about, well, what is your book actually about? What is the topic? Sure. So the book looks at 2001 and it looks at the subsequent 20 years after 9-11 and considers how women were approached in U.S. discourses and practices related to counterterrorism. So what I did in the book is I looked at international U.S. counterterrorism practices and considered how women were being discussed and what that looked like in practice. So the book focuses on uh, three countries. So it looks at Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, and Yemen, largely. It also considers Syria a little bit in later years. But the, the aim of the book was really to look at how the, uh, the US administrations of Bush, Obama, and Trump approached the issue of counterterrorism and how women uh, really came to feature in that. OK, thank you. That sounds very fascinating. And can you share a bit more about like what were the key findings of this book? Yeah, of course. Well. You know, I, I think you know the the main reason I really wanted to write the book was that since um, since 9/11, I had always seen a lot of um, discussion around terrorism and counterterrorism. You know, after 9/11, there was a, a proliferation of research on this. There was a lot of news coverage. There was a war in Afghanistan and Iraq and so forth. But what one of the uh, one of the angles that really seemed to be missing continuously was, well, what did, what did this mean for women in these situations? How were women's roles featuring in these practices? How were women being impacted by them? And so the, I really wanted to look at, again, how women were being discussed in this and, again, what this really meant in practice. So when I was looking um, at, the, uh, at the topic, um, I, I ended up reviewing 500 US government documents. So national security strategies, strategies on counterterrorism, uh, statements by presidents and so forth. And I interviewed um, about 30 uh, practitioners. So uh, former head of the CIA, a military general, a uh, US special representative um, for, for women. Um, and, uh, and the question was really about, you know, how are women featuring in, in these areas in the US, um, uh, USAID, so their, aid, um, their development agency, the US State Department, and uh, the US Department of Defense. And what I found as I was going through all of this was that, you know, there were, there were three things that really jumped out at me. The first was that women's roles were discussed in very specific ways in relation to counterterrorism. So I think the most obvious women were in the military or they were police officers actually on the front lines countering terrorism. But women were also talked about in other roles like the roles in the family, preventing family members from joining uh, terrorist organizations or countering it uh, as community members in their local communities. But women were also discussed as terrorist actors. And so the first thing that, uh, that really came, uh, became apparent to me was women's roles as agents, partners, and targets of counterterrorism. So they featured on all um, on all uh, fronts um, related to counterterrorism. The second Great. was that there were, yeah uh, the second big finding was that there were uh, several factors that really informed how and why this changed over time. So for example, um, things as simple as the kind of funding uh, an agency or a department had available to it could also impact how much money would be spent on certain things. Or if you had a, a program that focused on something like women's empowerment. All of a sudden, you would shape that as a, as a countering violent extremism program because that's how you could access funding for those in a very securitized environment. But it also highlighted things like um, the operational implications of having women involved in your operations. If you were in Iraq on the front line and you had to start doing uh, checkpoints and search women, you couldn't do that with male soldiers. So there was an operational um, benefit that was uh, identified along the way. So there are all of these different factors that also informed how women's roles evolved. And the third thing was that agencies always justified their inclusion of women in these practices in very distinct ways. 
whether it was women as 50% of the population or talking about the operational benefits for including women, there were often very specific discourses stated about why women should be involved in counterterrorism practices. But I think the overarching finding of the book and what I really hope your audience uh, thinks about as they're looking at the topic of counterterrorism is that really thinking about the roles of women and gender dynamics and implications in terrorism and counterterrorism had really been neglected over these years. And there were a lot of um, there were a lot of consequences and implications for that neglect. Do you feel that that last thing has changed over the maybe the past decade or maybe because of your book? Do you, do you feel there's more awareness now or, or is this still very much well something that you write down that you try to, to raise? But yeah, do you get a lot of response to that? Yeah, I think that really has changed. And ironically, I think it's been actually the rise of ISIS that has really influenced mm -hmm. this in many ways. And the reason for this is that, you know, women have always been involved in terrorist groups and they've had long roles in, in um, security services and the military and police. But what we saw with the rise of ISIS was women mobilizing from around the world to go join a terrorist organization in Iraq and Syria. And so there was a great understanding or a great push to better understand what motivated women to go join those. But that also, uh, you know, you can't uh, create a counterterrorism practice unless you understand the problem. So that was also reflected in responses to the group. What does the mobilization of women mean for countering violent extremism practices? How do counterterrorism practices account for uh, gender dynamics or the roles of women in these groups as well? Are there tactical, strategic, or operational implications for the roles of women in those that I have to account for in my operations? So there was a, a big conversation to be had. Um, and I think we did really see that conversation change a little bit after ISIS. But again, whether a lot of that uh, knowledge that's been generated or those new insights that have been generated, whether that carries forward is, is still to be seen. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for sharing this. I mean, there's a lot more to discuss, of course, um, but it's great to see like how people like you, scholars like you are moving the field forward by focusing indeed on these under-researched angles and also not only write a book, but you've presented it all around the world. You have a lot of contacts with policymakers to make sure people also do something with this knowledge, right? So um, thank you for sharing that with us. And yeah, for those at home, I, I can recommend one more time, of course. So please have a look at the book if you want to know more about this. Um, and for now, thank you, Dr. Joanna Cook, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.